Hello, welcome to Escape the Box Piano, it's Dana here. In this tutorial we are going to be looking at Nash's I Hate You, I Love You. And this really is an awesome song on so many levels. In some respects it's really easy and you can get to grips with the basics very very quickly. And in other respects it's sonically so rich and harmonically rich that you can do so many great things with it. Let's get stuck in and look at the real basics to start with. The song itself has only got four chords, and those four chords cycle round and round. We learn those four chords. Here's middle C. The first chord is F sharp minor. So we're going to take middle C and we're going to go, going to go down to an F and then up to F sharp. F sharp minor is F sharp, A, and C sharp. If I play that chord there. The second chord we need to know is E major. We go down to E with our thumb and then G sharp and B at the top. Third chord, C sharp minor. Down to C below middle C and up to the C sharp. And then third finger on the E, fifth finger on the G sharp. Finally, D major. Very easy, we just move our thumb up to D, third finger on F sharp, fifth finger on A. In the left hand, we simply support those four chords with what's called the root notes in the bass. So we're down one octave further, start with the F sharp. And move down to the E, all the way down to C sharp, fifth finger, and then finally up to the D. We play those four chords in sequence. And if we did nothing other than repeat those four chords round and round, you'd get from the start of the song to the finish of the song and you wouldn't make any mistakes. Of course, there's loads more to it than just playing the chords. First of all, let's take a look at how those chords are played. And they're actually played in sort of a, a laid back, lazy, almost rakish way. And what I mean by that is the notes are kind of split out. So instead of playing all the notes at exactly the same time, you kind of play them really quickly, one after the other. If I exaggerate it, you have to get a little bit quicker than that. And that's called a rake. So try experimenting with that, listen to the song and just try experimenting and try uh, developing your own ability to do that. Next, let's take a look at rhythm. There are three kind of blocks um, in we, you can consider this song to be made out of. Uh, if we take those four chords uh, as a single cycle, the first way of playing them is to simply hold the chord down static for four beats. The tempo of the song is exactly 92 beats per minute. Sounds like this. So if I cycle those four chords static, Hold them for four beats each. Sounds like this. One, two, three, four. And of course then the cycle repeats. The second block, we play the chord on the first beat 
and then we play the chord again between the second and third beat. And if you're counting those beats, one, two, three, four, imagine there's an and between each number. One and two and three and four and. And if you think like that, then the second time you play the chord, it's on the and between two and three. One and two and three and four. It sounds like this. One and two and three and four and 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 the third rhythmic block you play the chord on beat one, you play it again between beats two and three, and you play it again on beat four. One, two, three, four. Now let's talk a little bit about the texture of the song. This song is really harmonically rich. The way that the piano has been recorded and processed makes it sound like it's being played in the room next door and your head's under three pillows. It, what that means is that the, uh, the, the, the range of frequencies in there make you hear a whole bunch of different notes, not just the, the three primary notes of the chord. So the three primary notes of F sharp uh, minor F sharp, A and C sharp. You can definitely hear that, that's quite strong, but there's a whole bunch of other frequencies happening in there. In the rhythmic blocks where it moves, so it's not just held static, I hear that the chord's moving as well. So it starts in its root position, so with F sharp minor, uh, that would be F sharp, A and C sharp. But when it's played again, I kind of hear a note higher up. Uh, and so for me, uh, it sounds like this. So the first time it's played F sharp, A and C sharp. And then when it moves, keep the A and the C sharp, but now put the E at the top on, uh, on top of that. With the E major chord, the first time it's played, E, G sharp and B. And then again, when it comes the second time, keep the G sharp and the B and now put E over the top. With C sharp minor, first time it's played in root position, C sharp, E, G sharp. And then the second time the chord happens, I hear E, G sharp and a B at the top. And then the D major chord, D, F sharp and A, first time. And then F sharp, A and C sharp. So put it together and go from the root position and then moving it. And in the third rhythmic block, where we have the chord playing three times, I hear that first in its root position, then in the raised position, so where it's up, and then the third time where it comes back to the root position. So it looks like this. And then...
If I play that third rhythmic block, and again, and this time I rake the chords like I did um, a little earlier in the video, it looks a little like this. Final piece of the puzzle, um, if you listen to Nash's um, music video on his YouTube channel at about 3 minutes 18 seconds, um, there's a round of the chords that's played static but there's a single note melody that kind of happens over the top of that. And that looks like this, so first of all the F sharp minor chord, and then the E at the top happens after that. Then the E major chord, and then again an E, and then C sharp, and then B, then the C sharp minor chord, D major, and then D at the top, C sharp, and then B. and then the chords go around again. Speed that up a little bit and it looks like this. And then the chords repeat. One more time. And the final time the chords go around, it's the third rhythmic block, so root, up, root. And then that final D major chord is really raked quite slowly with a D at the top and held. So you've got the structure of the entire song, at least the version that Nash has got on his YouTube channel on screen now. And let's just um, look at the terminology, um, the way that I've described it. So static means that you're going to cycle the chords and you're going to hold those chords down for four beats each. So it sounds like this. root means that's the third rhythmic block so you start with the chord in its first position in its root position the second time you play the chord between beats two and three you play the second version of that chord where you move it up and then the third time you play that chord on beat four you move it back down to its root position it sounds like this one two three four And of course root up is that second rhythmic block where you play the chord just twice uh, in a four beat bar. The first time you play it is that root position chord and the second time you play it between beats two and three it's the second variation where you move the chord up. So it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I've put in brackets hold final, that means the final chord, so the um, D major chord, you simply hold that rather than play if you've got one of the rhythmic blocks where um, you would normally move. Instead of doing that, um, the second time round you simply hold it. And sometimes you count an extra four, you've got an extra bar where you do nothing before you then start the cycle of chords again. 
Well, I hope you guys have found this useful. I hope you enjoy playing this awesome song. I will post a Synthesia uh, tutorial for this where I play it all the way through um, and then you've got that as a Synthesia tutorial as well if you want to have a look at that, if that helps you. So uh, take a look out for that. I'm going to publish, publish that um, as soon as I can. Um, if you've enjoyed this, do subscribe, leave some comments. What do you want to see transcribed next? Um, what would you like to have your uh, music tutorial for? Um, and uh, I'll see you again soon.